Alright, so in this video I'm going to walk through um, some new updates to a StyleGen 2 model. Um, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about like where this these updates came from. Um, there was a new paper that just got released uh, by the NVIDIA folks who made StyleGen on um, how to basically improve um, your image uh, outputs using with if you have a really small data set. And like small data set to them means about a thousand images. Um, for us, that's probably pretty normal. So uh, let's walk through this. So I'm going to start by just like talking a little bit about the paper, um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the actual work. Um, the work was done by Sid Black, um, who's a developer who's done a bunch of stuff uh, in this realm before. So I want to give a big shout out to him. Talk a little, about, a little bit more about it when we get to the notebook. Um, okay, so uh, I'll uh, add a link to this paper. Um, the paper is, I believe, just titled as uh, Limited Data or Training Generative Adversarial networks uh, with limited data. Um, so it is by uh, Taro Karas, who is uh, also like one of the big people um, uh, through most of the StyleGAN work. So um, some good stuff here. I definitely recommend reading this paper. I actually find the StyleGAN paper like fairly readable. Um, so there's a lot of other ones have a ton of math. This one's like less mathy. Um, there's lots of graphs which you can sort of skip and just sort of read through. Um, the big takeaway from this model is just, or from this uh, paper, is just the idea that like, um, how do we like make better, more realistic outputs from small data sets, right? So small data sets, one of the big problems with them is that um, as they go through the discriminator, um, the discriminator basically memorizes what it needs to like learn. Um, and memorization on the on the discriminator side is kind of a problem because what that means is that you can overfit or you can have mode collapses or other things. Um, so the smaller your data set is, the more likely your discriminator is to uh, memorize the data, and then you get sort of like poorer outputs um, as the as the GAN trains further and further. Um, so there's been techniques over the past couple years of ways in which to like change that or alter that. Um, a common one that you'll see in a classifier network is to do augmentations, and that augmentation can be scaling, cropping, rotating, um, any number of things that might like sort of change the um, the input, right? So like that means that then the discriminators or the you know whatever is seeing slightly different types of images, um, and that can therefore like sort of keep it from memorizing. Now the problem with that in StyleGAN is that if you do too many augmentations to your you know input data set, your real your real images, that is what they what they describe as leaking. It leaks into your um, your outputs. So if you imagine like maybe uh, shearing, right? So that's like sort of tweaking an image so it's at a diagonal. If you apply that to your real data set, and then you train on it, it's going to end up like applying that shear to your outputs. Um, and that's a problem. Like We don't really want that happening. So um, what this paper learned, and this is the biggest takeaway, is that um, you don't apply that to your reels when you're doing the output. But what you do is when the, when the discriminator and generator are learning, you apply it to the reels and fakes that the discriminator sees. Um, so this basically means that, like uh, behind the scenes, like it's never something you're doing um, in your manipulation, but it's something that is seen uh, in the training process. Uh, there, are, there are a number of transformations or augmentations, as they call them. Um, and those augmentations are rotating. Um, I think there's some shearing, um, changing colors, um, doing what's called, uh, or I forget exactly what they call it. Um, cut mix, I believe, is what they refer to it as, and that's basically like cutting out small sections of an image and then um, blocking them um, or turning them black or white or something. Um, so there's any number of like different sort of techniques that we've seen people using um, or that they're, they're bringing into this to sort of learn. There's also some color um, manipulations, but it turns out that doesn't work as well, so you don't really need to worry about that as much. Um, but basically that's the big idea is that by applying this to both um, your fakes and your reels during training, um, that you can have a much better uh, output of images. Um, and in this paper, um, there are, you know, in an appendix, there's a number of images that they sort of show you of, um, you know, real images versus sort of the new model versus old version. Um, yeah, original style GAN 2. Um, and you can see it's definitely improved. Um, there's lots of reasons why that is. Um, there's also one here on dogs, um, that sort of thing. So um, they also have applied it to um, a sort of cut up version of, um, I believe these are cancer cells. Um, so there's a bunch of different reasons of, or a bunch of different ways in which they've sort of proved that this does work and it works better. Um, so uh, yeah, so this is sort of the paper. I definitely recommend giving it a read. I'll post a link to it um, in the video notes. Um, and in the next section, I'm going to show you, so Sid Black has basically taken this. Um, unfortunately, 
they have yet to release the 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 code for this um, that they that they built this on. Um, Sid Black went ahead and uh, figured out sort of how they were doing it and built his own version. Um, so in the next section of this video, we're going to uh, look at how to use that in a notebook I've set up. Okay, so let's take a look at this notebook. Um, this is a pretty bare bones notebook. It's just meant to show like a little bit of what changes when you're moving to the augmentation setup. Um, if you haven't seen like me walk through some of the collab stuff um, with Salgan 2 before, I definitely recommend checking out one of those other videos before moving here. Um, just to reiterate, like just to sort of go back and what we're going to do here. So we want to use TensorFlow 1. Um, we're also going to uh, mount our Google Drive account in Colab. That is really, really important if you are doing training within um, Google Colab because you don't want to be moving all these massive files around by manually. Um, this command here, uh, this is if you want to, um, if you want to just, if you've never set this up before, you'll want to run this cell. Um, basically what this does is this installs the repo into Google Drive, uh, downloads a bunch of other files, you're ready to get set up. Um, if you're, excuse me, if you're not going to use Colab, um, this is the command you want. So basically if you're going to move this to your own server, whether in paper space, GCP or whatever, um, this is the repo you're going to pull from. This is my repo. Make sure you're using this branch. So make sure you're using the branch called Augs Attention. Um, that just uses all the code that uh, includes Sid Black's uh, augmentation stuff. So make sure you're in this, otherwise it won't work. Um, if you're in my main branch, you'll just get the basic uh, StyleGAN2 uh, training system. So uh, if you've never run this before, you run this cell. If you have run this cell before, like in a previous training session, you just want to pick up um, either continue training or to train something new using this setup. Uh, you'll run this cell. So I'm going to go ahead and run this cell. This is what I'm already in. Um, last thing here before we get running is, uh, let's say you're continuing or you're doing uh, transfer learning, make sure that this line is pointed toward your, your, the pickle you want to train from. Um, and then this is your K images. So basically, if you're starting over from scratch, um, this is where you're going to want to um, grab first. So <clears throat> uh, in this case, I'm just going to train from scratch or like from the FFHQ model, so this will be a transfer learning, um, but it won't be continuing from any previous training. Um, so all I did is I go in here, and I grab uh, my files, so if I go down here, you go into results. Um, if this is the first time you're doing this, you'll probably want to grab from this pre-trained folder, so you just right click on this and hit copy path. Um, you're going to paste this in here. Um, because people, this is one of the common things people get stuck on, um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you include this uh, backslash. Anywhere there's a space, you're going to want to make sure that you fix that. <clears throat> OK, we're all set to go. So this trains just like anything else. Um, the big, big key to look at here is that um, before you run your Python command, you want to stick in this um, thing that says og prob, and then you want to give it a probability value. <coughs> What this is, and this comes, uh, this is actually something I didn't mention in the paper. The paper mentions that as you're doing these um, augmentations, you don't want to do them too often because then again, that will leak into your outputs. So what they recommend doing is they recommend setting a probability for how often you do these augmentations. Um, so far, people I've talked to have said like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 tends to be a good place to start. Um, the thing to know about this is that the lower this is, the more likely you are to get sort of a uh, normal training. The higher this is, uh, the quicker the training will sort of converge. But the problem is that also the more likely you are to have leaks into your outputs. So you don't want to make this too high. Um, I'm playing with some values in another setting um, to sort of see how high I can get this. But I'd say, you know, if you start with 0 0.1, 0 0.2, this is good. So this means uh, 10 to 20, this means 20% of your um, of the time that you're doing this training, it's going to do augmentations. Um, point one would be 10%, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, I do recommend playing with this um, and just sort of uh, seeing what you get. Um, once this is everything you need. So otherwise, everything else here is um, stuff you've probably already seen before. So this is based on the Skyfly Nil or the P Bailey's uh, repo. So you might just want to keep an eye on this. And uh, if you're not familiar with what this stuff means, watch one of my other videos. Um, where I explain how this stuff is set up, especially the res log uh, setup. So um, this is set to run on 1024 by 1024. Another thing to note is that if you have a non-square model, um, these augmentations might throw some errors. So uh, basically, the way this is set up is just assumes 
1024 by 1024. Um, so be careful if you have a non-square and you want to test this. Um, you might need to comment out um, some of the particular augmentations. So if you're into that, um, drop me a note and I'll try to see if I can figure out what that is. But in general, I would say this is going to work best if you have a 1024 by 1024 square model. Um, so uh, once this is set up, all you're going to do here is you're just going to um, hit shift return and run this command. This probably isn't anything new to you, but there's a couple new outputs you can keep an eye on as this runs. What did I do here? Invalid. Num int. Interesting. What's going on here? Looks like I may have just not run this cell. Uh, so once I ran the cell, now it's ready to go. Um, for those of you new to this process, uh, this will always be the slowest part, is just getting set up, um, especially on Colab, because you are, uh, you're, you pretty much always have to redo these, um, these CUDA files, the, the custom CUDA files that help things run quicker. Um, so it's always a little bit slow to get started um, in Colab. And this is sort of why, uh, again, if you've watched my other Colab videos, you know that this is not my recommended process. Um, it does work, actually. It works fairly well. Um, another note is, like, definitely pay for Colab Pro. You get about twice as much um, runtime um, before it shuts off your file. Uh, so just make sure that you do all of that. Um, otherwise, this can be a pretty annoying process to try to train on Colab. Cool, so these are the these are that, those custom CUDA commands. So it's just ran. And I believe it's going to start setting up our network here. Yep, and our network is set up. Now, the last thing before I shut off this video, though, is I would have just stopped uh, previously, is I just want to show that there's going to be some outputs here about um, the types of augmentations that it's going to do. I just want to make sure that I cover those. Cool. All right, so here we go. So um, in my fork, you're going to see a spit out here of a prob probability number. So this should always match your aug probability. If this doesn't match or this says none, um, it's possible that you either stuck in a wrong command up here um, or something else. So make sure that you see augment probability and then that value um, is set out there. Um, next, you're going to see a thing called policy. Um, the default is policy random, and I think that's fine to turn on. Uh, there may be an instance of where you don't want to do uh, translation, or you don't want to do rotation, or you don't want to do uh, color values. And there's a way to turn that off. Um, inside of this file, RF augment is, I believe, where the policy is set. And if you go down here, let's see. You know what? It's going to be hard to find in here because the file, the find function in these things doesn't work. Let's see. Finding in this thing doesn't work. Um, I'll post a note about where to where to edit this. But basically, what you want to do is you'll want to turn off a couple of these um, augmentation processes, um, and that just makes sure that uh, basically, like, if for whatever reason you don't want to use like the color mix or, or the cut mix, um, you can turn that off here. So, um, yeah. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, give this a run. Let me know what you think about it and see uh, how it works for you. Um, I personally have found this has made like in some cases very drastic improvements in other cases a little bit more minor improvements but i have found that it works fairly well um, for a lot of my work so um try it out i think it'll work for for most of you as well um yeah and there's also actually you know what this is a good point there's some good notes here um, about where he's pulling from there's actually a second paper um, that also discusses uh this augmentation technique actually i think there's a third even um, so there's a bunch of like new papers out that say this is a good process that works so um I'm glad that Sid was able to uh, build this in so quickly. Um, it might be that NVIDIA reaches, releases their code pretty soon, but we'll sort of see. Um, but in the meantime, start with this and see how it goes. Um, if you do run into issues, let me know, um, and I'm happy to sort of talk to Sid and see if we can diagnose those things. Um, yeah, so, uh, oh, here we go. This is where you do it. So you can pass in a policy here um, of, a, of a certain thing. So, yeah, um, that's it for me for this. Uh, let me know how it goes. Thanks.